Jessica Hallam graduated from Swinburne University in Melbourne, Australia, with a degree in design majoring in visual communication and works as a graphic designer with a sustainability mission. Feeling a sense of responsibility as a designer, she aims to influence consumer behavior and create a better environment for Indonesia by raising eco-awareness within her community and providing practical and achievable sustainable solutions. Hi everyone, thanks for uh, the opportunity for me to share my story about my journey building the Nibumi. So um, as you know, my background is not an activist or a scientist. I'm, uh, I'm actually a graphic designer who used to focus on branding and packaging. But since um, doing it for like almost 20 years, uh, I think we all really concerned about the health of our earth for the future generation, especially for my kids. So um, I'm here to present to you why do I care about um, uh, the less waste uh, journey in every household because I think we as a parents, um, we are the CEO of, the, of our household. Uh, we consume and we produce um, all of our waste and sometimes we don't know what to do. And with this Demi Bumi, I try to create a solution in our origin Bahasa in Indonesian um, because most of Indonesian doesn't know how to be uh, living in sustainable uh, way. So we don't really don't we don't really know how to segregate our waste. So in uh, 2018, we started with this net bag as a solution to reduce the amount of plastic while we buy fruits because. Uh, every time we go to supermarket, when we buy like five different fruits, we take five different plastic and put the price on it, right? And then many of Indonesians, they make the, all the plastic, they keep the plastic, but then they throw it again uh, as a rubbish bin, right? So there'll be more and more um, little single-use plastic in the bin. So... Um, in 2018 November, we sell this product and there are many friends really like this solution. So we don't really uh, think that further that uh, we're going to be this big, but we just thought that why don't we just influence our friends, our family to have this kind of solutions. And at the end, it grows and grows organically and we can produce other solutions. So now the Mibumi has been in uh, around in about five years and we targeted into school, public space, corporation and governments, which mainly focus on education and giving a lot of tips and tricks workshops, how to live less waste household, because that's where I learned how to live less waste, right? So I know how, how I can educate myself and how to remind myself every day to carry all the material that can reduce um, plastic, basically, um, I have to bring tumbler. I have to I have to bring um, Tupperware when buying takeaway. Um, I have to bring like um, collapsible cup for buying coffee, um, and I have to bring um, little Tupperware. Uh, we call it silicone food bag every time I buy meat. Uh, in a supermarket so we don't uh, take the styrofoam and the plastic. So this kind of tips and tricks, uh, they're all the same solutions for every of the um, activities basically, but it's just um, how we communicate is different. Like with kids um, under 10, we, we do a lot of uh, activities like playing um, rather than you know, sharing slides, <laughs> it will be boring, right? So, um, but for corporations, we give um, solutions for internal, um, their internal employees, because there are a lot of corporations invite us to teach them um, that why the business uh, uh, starting to think about um, waste management, but uh, they don't know how to educate the employee. So they, they create a system, but we educate the uh, employee about the household and about the 
uh, why we have to care about the climate change and uh, about the situation uh, at the moment. So we also do a lot of women empowerment. Uh, we help a lot of people uh, in poverty area here while we produce our solutions because that's where we can educate um, the village people because um, if we produce our products in a factory, we don't educate anyone, right? So we try to um, do a lot of the product um, uh, manufactured by uh, like little houses, basically, by uh, home industries. So we can control, we can educate them, and we let them know what's our missions. Um, and we also, because I like to go to local tribes and stay there and learn about uh, Indonesian sources, so I can also develop uh, and uh, improve Indonesian uh, skincare product based on Indonesian source material um, that I been inspired by the local tribes. For example, uh, we develop shampoo bar, which uh, made from Ilipe butter, and Ilipe butter is from Borneo originally, and it's actually a really really good oil or butter that came from fruits, um, from plants. And if we help um, producing uh, Ilipi butter, we also help the, the forest um, to be maintained in, in Borneo. So we try to think forward about how the, the products uh, source material uh, been developed. Establish a lot of platform uh, for educations, uh, we have Instagram because in Instagram Indonesia is very popular, not Facebook. Um, so we try to manage uh, and make Instagram as a library for our waste information. So all the waste solutions, all the waste facts in Indonesia, uh, we try to inform there in a simple graphic and also well in, well inform super graphic so people notice and people want to learn because I noticed that many of sustainability um, platform here, they mainly speak in English. So it doesn't really reach the target in poverty area. So that's why main uh, media in Demi Bumi is in Bahasa or in Indonesian language. And we also separate the Instagram for solution, which is mainly the products is uh, uh, for focusing on the solution itself. And now we do a lot of upcycling product that came from waste material into reusable products. And we also develop catalog uh, in our website and a lot of information there for uh, corporation to contact us because uh, many of corporation ask us to do uh, customized upcycle products which is very good for the hampers instead of using new material. So we use a lot of waste material. In terms of myself, um, by building the Mibu Me, it made me change into a new person too. So um, during the pandemic, uh, my rooftop used to be just like a drying cloth area. So it's a laundry area. Um, so it's nothing, it's, there's no plan at all. It's actually a place where we sunbathe basically during pandemic. But now um, it has already turned into like food forest, our food forest in only like two years. Um, so this um, also helped me to educate people and keep educating uh, our followers to grow, not just uh, educate about the waste but also about urban farming because I do this with our organic waste at home so that's how we maintain our um, we, we call it rooftop garden organic rooftop garden so we uh, recycle the uh, the water uh, from the from the rain uh, also we uh, do eco enzyme we ferment fermentate the fruits to become fertilizer and to become also biopesticides. And we also have composter uh, for processing our organic at home to become fertilizer. So everything come in a circular. So that's why um, this can be a 
proof for everyone that we as a person is very powerful to change the climate on like in everyday ha a house basically it's not so we don't really have to think um have to think too far like we have to grow big tree in the forest but we can grow like our food in our garden in our rooftop so yeah so it's about 80 percent of our uh food based on our rooftop garden so i don't really have to go to supermarket to buy veggie anymore so all the herbs all the um veggie the salad everything there i also have chicken in the house since the pandemic because i noticed that my kids since uh, pandemic they are really into computer because of the homeschooling right so i have to make them um to distract them from being in the house that's why uh, i uh, i buy chickens so they go out and then play with the chicken and treat the chicken as their pet <laughs> So they name them, they they talk to them. So yeah, and it's fun. And they they give us eggs every day and they, they also give us fertilizer. So it's a complete solution for house. And it's really also a really good education for our kids because then the kids never, you know, never ask for buying toys because they always play outside. Um, they always look after for the insects in the garden. Um, they learn about you know um environment in our house basically they don't really have to learn theor theoretically uh, at school but all of the the science um about butterfly about insects they're all in our garden they they can learn everything there um so every time they find any insects ladybug different type of ladybug different type of butterfly or different type of um dragonfly they can google what's the name of it and they can learn about it and it's, it's really fun and also um it reduces us uh, the amount of single use because i don't have uh, to buy single use plastic or aluminum foil for cooking anymore because i have all the solutions from the garden i use leaves and i use um food coloring from butterfly pea in the garden from the flower and since then, I also uh, try to make fermentations, um, starting with Indonesian famous fermentation. Uh, our superfood is called tempeh. Um, it's actually a combination between mushroom and beans. So that it's, that's why it's called superfood, because it's full of fiber. It's high in protein, uh, fiber, and also high in vitamins. Um, and compared to uh, eating meat, um, it it reduced a lot of uh, gas emissions by eating uh, tempeh. So it's very healthy. And I learned about the fact uh, comparison between tempeh and tofu, tempeh and meat. Uh, tempeh has more than them. So um, that's why it's really famous at the moment. So uh, Indonesian uh, before only focused on using soy. Um, but now we import the soy. So that's why I try to teach how to make tempeh with different type of beans because Indonesia has a lot of beans. And I teach them how to make tempeh without using single-use plastic. Because at the moment in modern society in Indonesia, they use plastic for the fermentation. So we can actually use any medium at home like a glass or a bowl or a plate and then cover with a wet cloth. Um, for wet cloth for the fermentations we don't really have to use plastic so the shape of it is more fun that's a sample of my tempeh so um, there are different type of bean that I've been using not just bean I also try to use rice I also try to use corn I use seaweed I use uh, different herbs um, and different edible flowers so it smells good, it looks good, and people want to learn how to make it. And I also uh, teach people to eat raw because if they can make it, they can make it clean tempeh. It's more hygienic because they use their own method, their own technique. And it's more nutritious because um, they use different type of bean. So yeah, so I hope you enjoy my presentations and have fun. <laughs> 
That's all.